Hello and welcome to the experience at Evangelistic. Before today's message starts, this is the time that you can like, share, and start your own watch party with this live stream video. Again, you like it, share it, and start your own watch party. Let's spread the word of God. Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship Service of Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church, located in Port Wainini, California. Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church is under the direction of Rev. Dr. Torrent K. Niven. God bless you, brothers and sisters of the faith. I am the Rev. Dr. Torrance K. Nivens. I'm the Senior Pastor of Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church, located at 125 East Pearl Street in Port Wainini. California 93041. This is the EMBC Word Hour. Welcome, 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 brothers and sisters, on this beautiful Sunday that the Lord has made. Matter of fact, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it today. Look, before we go further into the service, I want you to prepare your um, communion items. We're going to have our first communion Sunday the last communion Sunday of December 2020, brothers and sisters, before we have our next one will be in January of 2021. Brothers and sisters, prepare all your items and we have a song for you by the EMBC. Brothers and sisters, Lord, enjoy yourself. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, just focus on the goodness of God and you will allow the Lord to have his way in your home right now. So prepare your communion items and I will be back shortly.
Welcome back, brothers and sisters. Did you enjoy yourself? I know I did. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Once again, I am the Reverend Dr. Torrance K. Nivens of Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church of Port Wining Me. Welcome, welcome, welcome again. We can never welcome you enough, brothers and sisters, because we all need to know that we are welcome in the church and we are welcome in the kingdom of God today. Hallelujah. I pray that you're doing great today. I know that things may not be going the way that you want them to go. Some things happen that you weren't aware that were going to happen, kind of caught you off guard. But you know what? God has still given you the victory. He's given myself the victory. He's given all of us the victory. So continue to carry on with your victorious self. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we get into the word, let's get into some prayer, shall we? So that I Got You crew is standing by. We ask you and encourage you to put your prayer requests in the comment box or the prayer box. That's what we call it online now. And whatever it is that I got you crew, they will be praying for you, encouraging you, brothers and sisters. We want you to be encouraged today because God is still answering prayers. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. I believe that. I believe that God is still answering prayers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you. And we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you, God, for your kindness. You've been so good to us, God. Thank you for the blood that covers us and washes us whole. We thank you for the sacrifice of Yeshua, of Jesus the Christ. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you for another day, God, that you have allowed us to see. We thank you for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, God. Lord, we ask you that you continue to keep your hand upon us. Continue to clear our minds in the pathway that you have set before us, Lord. We ask you to have your way, God. Continue, God, to rest, rule, and abide it forth in our lives, God, that you will get all the glory and all the praise, not just in our personal lives, God, but in our actions, God, in our homes, God, on our jobs, in the church, God, wherever it is, Lord, we ask you that you will have your way in glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. There are many people who are struggling, God, we put them in your hands. God, we are struggling with our own personal situations, God, Lord, we put it in your hands, those who lost loved ones and who are grieving right now, we put it in your hands, God, we ask you to have your way, have your way, Lord God, have your way, touch, heal, deliver, touch, heal, and deliver, and not just for physical illness, but for mental disorders, God, mental disturbances, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, Glory, hallelujah, bring peace into the minds of the resentment, Lord, and strife, Lord, and envy, God, and, and, and murmurings, Lord. We ask you, God, to release us from those things that we will be able to have liberty in you through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, God, hallelujah, and the living of your word, glory, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, have your way, Lord, as I prepare, God, to give a word, God, as you do speak, be God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, God, Lord, we desire more of your Holy Ghost, glory, hallelujah, let your word penetrate the soul, God, that we take some of our God, and give someone a quick revelation what you have for her and what you to do, what you called us to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, touch, have your way. Touch, have your way. Here, we put this virus continuously in your hands. The vaccine in your hands. Our political leadership in your hands. Our church churches, ministries, the flock of God in your hands, God, right now. Glory, hallelujah, Lord, we love you. Glory, hallelujah, we love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your holy name, God. We love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for making us great. Thank you for blessing us anyway. Thank you. Thank you for keeping us beyond our faults. Thank you, God, for giving us a clear and a, a, a mind of peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Give us strength to continue to carry on. Glory, God, and 
Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, hallelujah, Lord, we praise you, thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. God is still on his throne, and the God, God is still on his throne. He is still reigning forever. He's still powerful. He's still mighty. Let God continue to have his way. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Let's get into this word. Last week, what did I tell you? The reason why the devil hates you is because you look like God. Because you look like the most high. Because you look like the creator of the universe. Creator of all living creatures. Creator of life. You look like God. And God has blessed you tremendously. More than you can ever know. More than you can ever dream of. God has blessed us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on. Turn your Bibles. Turn your Bibles. Turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. That's where we're coming from. That's where the main, the, the root and, and, and the meat of this topic and this theme, this idea that we look like God. That should, that should do something to you, knowing that you look like the, the supreme God. Hallelujah. That says a whole lot about your creator. Glory, hallelujah. All right. Genesis chapter 1, starting at verse 26. I'm reading from the Message Bible, beloved, okay? The Word of God says, let us make human beings in our image. Make them reflecting our nature so that they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself. And every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He created them God-like. Remember last week I said, you're going through it because you look like God. Hallelujah. Start acting like God. God start acting like his creation that looks like him. God created human beings. He created them God like reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. Come on, put it in, put it in, put it in, put it in. I look like God. I look like God. That means I'm victorious. That means I'm victorious, brothers and sisters. Last week, we got into a couple of points. And the main point was that God spoke you into existence. And that means if God spoke you and I into existence, that means, brothers and sisters, we should not worry about folks who have no power and no authority to wake us up. No power, no authority to save us. No power and authority to give us salvation. No power and authority to help turn our situations around. Sometimes we focus more on people who hinder us more than anything. And that's putting all your energy, your resources into things, brothers and sisters, that have nothing to offer you. If God spoke you into existence, that means he has everything you need, everything that I need to get beyond this point. Hallelujah. And then lastly, we ended with last week, brothers and sisters, is that if God spoke us into existence, that means we are always and have been and will always be on God's beautiful mind. God spoke you into existence because we were on God's mind. God tells the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, while he was being detained, while he was in confinement, while he was struggling with his identity and he was struggling with his right now and he couldn't believe the situation that he was in. God showed up several times while he was being detained and God told him, in chapter 29, verse 11, God told him, I know my plans for you, man of God. 
Well, God, what, what does that mean? You're on my mind. You're always on my mind, no matter what you're going through, no matter how highs and how lows, no matter what you have and what you don't have, no matter where you've been and where you're going, you're always on God's mind, brothers and sisters. So why not have God always on your mind? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you agree with that? Say praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Next, I told you. We were going to get into this week, so let's get into it. God spoke us into existence. We're always on God's mind. But in these scriptures, God also shows us the power of seeing it and speak it. See it and speak it. See it and speak it. Write that in. See it and speak it, brothers and sisters. See it and speak it. The power of seeing. And then speaking is amazing. It, 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 it's an amazing concept. And God reveals it here in the beginning, beginning of Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, matter of fact, brothers and sisters, starts off by saying, and God said. Not God did or, or God made, but the Bible starts off by saying in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, and God said said God spoke and it came about the earth was without form void lightless and dark was placed upon the earth God spoke into the earth and that's when everything changed brothers and sisters when God spoke into darkness light came about when God spoke into the situation when God spoke into the earth the earth became a living planet Glory to God. Everything that we see on the earth, we, with our, our, our eye, with, the, with, with, with everything that we look around and we see, it came from God speaking it into existence. God spoke it and it came. Do you hear what I just said? God spoke it and it came. Well, let me backtrack a little bit. Let me backtrack a little bit because I really want to paint this picture for you, brothers and sisters. God spoke it and it came into existence. But in order, and this is what I believe, in order for God to speak it, God had to see it first before he said it. Do you understand, beloved? Before God spoke it, God saw it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, some people say that Moses is the, is the author of uh, Genesis, especially the beginning part of Genesis. And, and I believe that if Moses is the author, Moses realized the power of God seeing it in order for him to speak it. God spoke it. He saw it. Then he was able to speak it. God called things into existence that he had already seen in his mind. Let's go back to the word, shall we? Genesis chapter 15, verse 2 through 5. I'm going to read from the NIV version. Genesis chapter 15, verse 2 through 5. It says, but Abram said, he's not Abraham yet. Before he uh, fulfilled the promise and received the covenant, he was Abram. He was the father of. But then later on, he became Abraham, the father of many. And right here, in Genesis chapter 15, verse 2 through 5, it says, But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is, um, some people say Eleazar, some people say Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children. So a servant in my household would be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Glory, hallelujah. This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's a servant within itself. He took him outside and said, look up at the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count, which the word count means to see, indeed, if you can see them, then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Shall we unpack that a little bit, beloved? The Bible says that 
Abram was complaining to God. He was saying that the one that's going to get my inheritance, the one that's going to be heir after me, did, did not come from um, myself and my wife. It came from me and my um, maidservant. And I, 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 I'm not I'm not feeling that, God. I'm not feeling that. But if that's the way that we're going, then that's the way I'm going to go. God responded to the man of God. See, sometimes, brothers and sisters, we got to start pity patty around our prayers and begin to start praying specific prayers. Lord, this is what's going on. I don't understand this. I don't see this. And I'm trying to get a better understanding, Lord. I need you to be specific with me with God. And guess what? God is a big enough God that he can be specific with you. So God got specific with Abram. He said, no, 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 that dude, he, look, he, he going to have, he going to have a, a, a part of the inheritance from you, but he, he's not going to be your heir. But, but, but let's not get into that right now because you're not going to be able to understand it totally without getting this, Abram. You need to see it first. You need to see it. Oh God, you need to see it first. So I'm going to take you outside, just pretty much. I'm going to take you outside of your complaining. I'm going to take you outside of, of what you can only see right now. I want you to step outside. Brothers and sisters, can I say this to you? The reason why some of us are not really seeing what we need to see is because we're still in the box. God is saying, I need you to step outside of the box. I know it may be uncomfortable for you and for others, but I need you to step out outside of the box and see the supreme God, see the supernatural. In order to see the supernatural, you're going to have to step out and see some things for yourself. God, and God, you know what God is saying? And only I can show you this. Only I can show you this. Come on, come on, write it in, step out. Step out, step out, step out, step out. Even if you gotta make it personal, I need to step out, I need to step out. No matter what people say about me, no matter what people try to do or, or what they agree, what they, what they see, not everything that God is showing you is being revealed to everybody around you. I need you to see something. I need you to see the supernatural. Glory to God. Step out. Step out, man of God. Look up at the heavens and count the stars. Okay, now it's going to take a little work. It's going to take a little work. Look, I, I told you that you exist because of God. I told you that you're always on God's mind. Now you need to obey the command of God. You need to obey the will of God. You need to obey the word and way of God, What the instructions of God, divine instructions. You have to obey in order to go to the next level. Whatever it is to go to the next level in life, you need to obey. I need you to step out. Glory to God. Step out. Look up at the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, you can see them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. God told Abram, he told Abram, he said, I need you to count, brothers and sisters. I need you to do a little work. I need you to be able to prepare yourself to Take some time out and begin to put all your blessings in order. How can I put all my blessings in order? Here we go, brothers and sisters. I need you to see it first. I need you to see it. Oh, glory to God. God saw you in the future. But before he created you, before he spoke you into existence, before he spoke us into existence, God saw us first. So God is saying it's very vital and important that in order to retain it, in order to have it, in order to possess it, you're going to have to see it. I'm going to have to show you something first. You have to see it first. Brothers and sisters, you cannot have something it is difficult to have something and not see it first. And it's difficult to keep it if you didn't really saw yourself having it in the first place. That's why a lot of people lose certain things because number one, they never saw themselves having it or worthy of it. But let me tell you, let me tell you, 
I exist because of God. I, I, I'm here because of Jehovah. I'm here because of the ancient of days. I'm here because of God Almighty. I'm here because there's a God in heaven who sits up high and looks down low. He loves me. I'm here. Get this. It's because he saw me. Oh, glory to God. And matter of fact, you know why I'm blessed? I'm blessed because God saw me being blessed. If God can see me being blessed, why can't I see my own self being blessed? And this is why we have a lot of people that are speaking, but they're empty words. They're, they're powerless words because they're speaking something that they can't even see first. Hallelujah. I see a better life for me and my family. I see a better life for uh, my wife. I see um, um, a house. I, I, I see ministry, ministries birthed in and, and affect, you know, affecting lives in a positive way. I, I see being able to um, lead brothers and sisters without drama and, and, and extra things on the side that's trying to hinder the, the ministry and different things like that. I can see it. I can see it. I can see um, days of tranquility. I can see days of peace. Hallelujah. I can see days that, hallelujah, my, my um, income is at a place where I don't have to worry about putting this over here and losing that over here. Everything will be fine. I can see my health. I can see my, my, my body and, and getting better and, and my health and, and my stability and, and being able to take care of myself. I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. I know you can see it. I know you can see things getting better. Hallelujah. Just don't speak stuff without seeing it. You got to see it first. See it and then speak it. Glory, Glory to God. Let me read you something. Let me read you something. Romans chapter 4. Verse 16 through 17, you got to read this, brothers and sisters, and able to understand the power of seeing it and speaking. That's what we're on. Hallelujah. You exist because of God. You're always on God's mind. But you also should see the power of seeing and speaking. Here we go. Romans chapter um, 4, verse 16 through 17. The NIV version says, therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed um, guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. Hallelujah. All those who are the faith of Abraham, he is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Glory to God. I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed. You got to believe. You got to have faith so it can come. The God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. You better go on, Paul. You a bad boy. Hallelujah. You a bad boy. You telling, you telling the Romans, the brothers and sisters at Rome, that you have to understand you can be intellectual. You can have all this wisdom and all this knowledge and all this education. You can have all these degrees. You can have all this money. But if you don't see it, brothers and sisters, it ain't coming. You got to understand. You got to understand of seeing it. How can I see it, brothers and sisters? Matter of fact, let's put it a deeper word on it. It's faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. In order for me to retain it, in order for me to maintain it, in order for me to have it, I got to be able to see it. Just like God. God saw the earth having life. God saw you having form. God saw you having life. God saw you having responsibility over everything over the earth. God saw every creature on the earth that will submit to you who look like God because, number one, not because God spoke it, it's because, number one, God saw it. Then he spoke it. You are listening to Pastor Torrance K. Niven of Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church as he delivers this dynamic message at Evangelistic Sunday Morning Worship Service. If you would like to support, partner with, or donate to the ministry, please go to Evangelistic website at www.evangelisticmbc.com. Watch the crawler across the bottom of the screen for NBC's complete contact and donation information. Now, back to Dr. Niven. Hallelujah. In the past, we have said, 
do this and do that. Speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it. And people saying, well, you know, it's not doing anything. And, and we messed up. We messed up and we apologized. We should have realized that maybe you didn't see it and that we didn't see it first. But we were forcing it because we were trying to speak it into existence without seeing it into existence. Huh, glory to God. Come on, write it in. I need to see it. 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 Then I'm going to speak it. Glory to God. Oh, my God, my God. I can stay on that all day. I can stay on that all day. Apostle Paul says, you're just like Abraham. You're connected to him through your what? Through your faith. Through your belief. And just like he believed and spoke things, and, 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 and Abraham spoke things into existence as if they were, it's because he saw it, beloved. I see us getting behind this call. See my children growing up to be outstanding, fine young men, men of God, warriors of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Here you go. Here you go. One, one more thing. Let me give you one more thing. One more thing. God spoke us into existence. You're always on God's mind. You need to see it and then speak it. And you need to see the power of the fact that God formed you. Ooh, now we're going to get intimate with God. God formed you. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The NIV version says, The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Became a living being. Let me read that again. The Lord God formed, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. The word form here means to uh, squeeze. It means the squeezing, hallelujah. We're gonna have fun with this. The squeezing into shape and molding into a certain figure, a certain shape, a certain form. Especially as a potter, uh, brothers and sisters, figuratively or uh, Determine, uh, determine shape. The potter determines. He, he or she, they see a certain shape that they want to form this certain clay into, this substance into. They just don't form on the realm, but they see a certain shape that they want to form this certain clay into. You see where I'm going? But that's in the word. That's in the word. That's right there, brothers and sisters. I'm, I'm not saying anything, anything different. It's right there in, in the word. Hallelujah. When something has a form or it's been formed, brothers and sisters, there is a process involved. Hallelujah. Write this in. Trust the process. Trust the process. <laughs> Trust the process. Oh, I'm preaching to myself this morning. Trust the process. When we read this scripture, we tend to bypass this word form. We just bypass it, okay? He, he made some stuff. But it's more than just making, brothers and sisters. You can make something on accident. But in order to form something, you have purpose. Hallelujah. You have a purpose. You have a reason. When we read the scripture, brothers and sisters, we need to see the power and the process of getting formed. 
And here in this process, God formed you and the way he forms you is for a specific reason. Hallelujah. Being formed is a process and squeezing is necessary. I'm going to repeat myself. Being formed is a process and, sque and squeezing is necessary. Write it in. Squeezing is necessary. Forming is a process, but squeezing is necessary. There's a squeezing that takes place when God is forming us. It may be uncomfortable and it may uh, feel kind of weird, but God is squeezing us because he's pouring himself into us. He's pouring his imagination. He's, he's pouring into us what is necessary to form us in a way that we need to be able to get this to maintain his breath. Ooh, glory to God. Glory to God. Are you awake this morning? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. I am. Glory to God. God wants you to understand, brothers and sisters, that yes, the squeezing process may be uncomfortable and, and it may be awkward at times, but God is saying, I have to squeeze you because I have a certain form and I have a certain intention for you, brothers and sisters, in order for you to hold my breath. You got to take on the squeezing of my form. Glory, hallelujah. Ha, glory, hallelujah. He squeezed you and I into shape. God squeezed you into shape. Why did God need to mold us into shape, brothers and sisters? I just gave it to you. It's because you got to hold his breath. You got to be able to carry his breath of life. Glory, hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. I used to love when I used to go to my grandmama's house. And brothers and sisters, she I would always look forward to those hugs that she would give me, those tight hugs. And her hug showed me that she loved me. But when she would squeeze me, it would let me know, brothers and sisters, that she was also pouring herself into me. She was also having an intimate moment. She would combine. Because a lot of people, we can hug, brothers and sisters. But when you squeeze, that takes you beyond just a hug. When you squeeze, that shows you that I have a connection. I have a bond with you. And when God squeezes, we you brothers and sisters God was showing you and I that he has a bond a connection with us he wanted us to take on his form his shape he wanted us to be able to hold and maintain his breath brothers and sisters I know the process can be hard at times but trust the process and squeezing is necessary. I know you're going through something, but God is just squeezing you. I know you feel some kind of way, but God is just squeezing you. I know it gets hard sometimes, but God is just squeezing you. I know times are rough right now, but God is just squeezing you, brothers and sisters. All you got to do is just let God give you the form that you need to be able to hold his breath. Glory to God. I exist because of God. Hallelujah. I'm always on God's mind. Hallelujah. I just need to see it so I can speak it into existence. And then this last part today, I've been formed by God. That means, brothers and sisters, I can handle some stuff. I can handle some stuff. I can hold some stuff. I can do some stuff. Glory to God. Glory to God. Forming takes a process. But the squeezing. Ah, the squeezing is necessary. Hey, glory to God. The squeezing is necessary. And God showed me that a lot of stuff that I thought that uh, um, it was unfair and I thought some things that was too difficult to me. God showed me in this word that it's just a process of squeezing into shape.
That's what the word form means. In order for me to take on the shape and form of God, in order for me to do this, he had to form me. He had to squeeze me. He took the dust of the earth. And, and, and is the dust means pretty much like the clay, the clay of the earth and with the moisture in it. That's how a powder makes a vase. He, he takes clay and water. He took that he took that clay, that moisture of the earth, and he 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 squeezed me into who I am. But this is the way I want to end it today. The process continues. And the squeezing will never stop. Oh. Whatever you go through from here on now, tell yourself, trust the process. I'm just being squeezed. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. <sighs> my God. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Could you believe it? We're not done with this section. We got some more to go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, God has given us some jewels. Hallelujah. Trust the process. Now, let me know you. Let me show you how to trust the process. And encourage you. Number one, give your life to God. Have you given your life to God? Have you give me your life to God right now. I encourage you to give your life to God, beloved. Don't waver. Don't lack on that. Give your life to God right now. Believe in his power. Receive his salvation. Let God have his way. Let God have his way. Let him have his way. Glory to God. And if you have given your life to God and maybe you've fallen, just the process. There's some squeezing going on. Get back up. Get back up. Confess to the Lord. Ask the Lord, hey Lord, I need your help. I need your help. See yourself getting up. See yourself turning around. See yourself getting better. Hallelujah. Mm. See it. Speak it. Mm. We have a responsibility, all of us are brothers and sisters of faith, that we pray for those others to be saved and delivered now that liberty in God glory to God glory to God thank you hallelujah e glory to God ha glory thank you Lord ooh I'm full ooh my 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 I'm full today Whew. I just keep hearing it in my spirit Trust the process, trust the process, trust the process, trust the process. It's just squeezing, that's all it is. It's just squeezing. Glory, hallelujah. Mm. Let's get into our community. Come on, let's make sure you, you have time to get your items together. And we're ready to go, brothers and sisters. The last communion Sunday of 2020, my goodness. Of 2020. Glory to God. You made it this far, beloved. That's something to praise God about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm reading from Mark chapter chapter 14, um, verse, verses 22 through uh, 26. Mark chapter 14, verse 22 through 26, uh, the communion, what it entails, and why we do what we do. Word of God comes from Mark chapter 14, verse 22. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. 
Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Verse 26 says, And when they had sung a hymn, hallelujah, they went out unto the Mount of Olives. Glory to God, to the Mount of Olives. After they sung a hymn, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the communion. We ask you that you clear our minds and our hearts that we will not take it in an unworthy manner. We do this unto you, God, in remembrance of you as often as we can. So, God, we love you and we praise you. We eat the bread that represents your body. We drink of the cup that represents your blood. We love you and we praise you in your sure name. Amen. All right, you ready? You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's do this. All minds clear, all hearts willing, let us commune together into that great day that our Lord God shall commune with us in his Father's kingdom. Glory, hallelujah. Body of our Lord, hallelujah, which he sacrificed to us. Take and eat all of it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The cup that represents his blood that was shed for the missions of sins. Take and drink all of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your body and the blood that you sacrificed for me. Sacrifice for us. Glory to God. He saw himself sacrificing his life for us. You know that. And he went on and did it. Glory to God. Glory to God. He spoke it. He saw it and he spoke it. That's why he warned us and let them know that he was going to sacrifice himself. But he was going to get up on the third day. Hey, glory. And that's exactly what he did. He got up with all power in his hands in heaven and earth. And because he got up, I can see myself getting up. Hallelujah. I can see my mama getting, getting up, my grandma. Hallelujah. My family. Loved ones. Hey, glory. I can see us getting up. But before we get up from death, let's get up from the things of the earth. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it and speak it. And trust the process and know that's a squeezing going on. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, brothers and sisters, if God laid on your heart to give to this ministry, we have all the information provided, brothers and sisters, that you can give this ministry and sow a seed into this ministry. We thank you for your giving in advance. We thank you for your support, your love, for sharing these segments and also participating online, for holding watch parties, clicking love and likes, whatever it is, we thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of this ministry and this fellowship. Well, I enjoyed you. Happy Sunday to you. Continue to enjoy your family, enjoy your life, enjoy this is the day that the Lord has made you look like God going with your bad self. You look like God, and we thank God for that. So once again, I'm Reverend Dr. Torrance K. Nivens, Senior Pastor of the Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church of Port Wainini. God bless you, God keep you, and may the Lord continue to be with you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Hallelujah. <laughs> You have been enjoying the experience at Evangelistic and listening to Reverend Dr. Torrance K. Niven, pastor of Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church, located in Point Wainini, California. If you would like to donate, partner with, or support Evangelistic, you can do so online. Go to www.evangelisticmbb.com and click the donate button. Evangelistic live streams all its services. Be sure to catch Hour of Power Prayer and Bible Study on Wednesday night during Wednesday Night Live. Hour of Power Prayer is at 5.30 p.m. Pacific and 8.30 Eastern. Bible Study is at 7 p.m. Pacific and 10 p.m. Eastern. See you again next week at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Sunday morning worship service. Evangelistic NBC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribe to the Evangelistic NBC channel on YouTube.
All messages, video, teaching, sermons, and material by Evangelistic found online is fully produced and owned by Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church of Port Wyoming, California.